Hi guys, welcome to the Artemis Defense Institute and our video series on gun safety and buying your first gun. Uh, this particular uh, overview video is going to be from beginning to end the actual process of going through and purchasing a firearm. Now, there are certain steps along the way that we're going to be discussing and there's going to be supplemental videos that you can access that go into more detail on those individual parts. But this video is kind of like a broad overview on a linear progression start to finish. Um, my name is Stephen Lieberman. I'm one of the co-owners of the Artemis Defense Institute. And with all of our videos, we always like to begin by going over the four safety rules again. I, all guns we treat as though they are loaded. We never allow the muzzle to cover or point at anything we're not prepared to destroy. We always keep our finger off the trigger unless our sights are on target and we've made the decision to shoot and we know our target and its environment. Okay, with that being said, let's go through the actual process. You have decided that you want to buy this Glock 17, all right? So how do we actually physically go about doing that? Well, you're gonna need to compile some paperwork. You also are probably going to need, if this is your very first time purchasing a firearm in California, to also get a firearm safety card. Again, we'll go into more detail on the firearm safety card in a subsequent video. Um, but assuming you've already accomplished that, you're going to get your driver's license. You're going to get some form of utility bill or vehicle registration that has your address on it. If you don't have an address on your driver's license or your utility bill, say you've registered it to a post office box or you have a post office box on your driver's license, you're going to want to get supplemental identification that shows that you actually are a resident of the state of California. Um, also, you're going to want to make sure that your driver's license is current. It has to be the same address as where you actually live. So if you haven't updated your DMV records, you're going to have to do that too. You're also going to want to have a copy of your FSC card. Now, the, uh, um, the FSC card is only valid for five years. So if you've purchased a firearm, uh, say, eight years ago, you're going to have to get a new FSC card. Once you've compiled all this stuff, you're going to go over to the gun store. Or alternatively, I suppose you could buy it online and have it shipped to a gun store. Again, we'll go over that little thing in another video. But regardless, you're going to, let's use the, the sort of the uh, rubric that you're going to go to a gun store to go buy this Glock 17. Once you arrive and you've selected that gun, paid for the firearm, you are then going to begin the process of filling out what's referred to as a 4473 form. Now, without getting too wonky, you guys are going to be doing both a state law interaction as well as a federal law interaction. For the purchase of a firearm, you have to use the federal 4473 form. I want to go over some of the things here in this 4473 form because everything that you put down here, you are signing under penalty of perjury that it is in fact accurate and correct information. One of the very first questions that people look at and they immediately wrinkle their nose is where it talks about a social security number. This is completely optional. You do not need to put down your social security number. Personal recommendation, I probably wouldn't do it, okay? But some people do and that's fine, I suppose. You're also going to have to demarcate your race. Now, for those of you who happen to be attorneys that are watching this uh, along with everybody else, you probably know right off the very beginning that that is a violation of federal law to be asking for race information. That all that was standing, it's still there and you have to fill it out. I do want to backtrack. You'll notice up at the top here, it says middle name. It's very important. If you do have a middle name, you have to put down that you have a middle name. If you don't have a middle name, then you're going to put down in that box NMN, no middle name, okay? Every box needs to be filled out completely. Um, it's then going to ask you a very personal question. It's gonna ask whether or not you are a user of marijuana. Now, some of you probably know that under state law, 
it is legal to consume marijuana. Under federal law, for the time being, it still remains illegal. So if you are a user of marijuana and you mark down that you, in fact, are a user of marijuana, your gun transaction will be denied. Okay. Um, as you fill this entire thing out, if you are not a legal resident of California, you are, or, uh, excuse me, if you're not a legal resident, period, um, you will not be allowed to proceed. If you are a resident alien, you will have to provide supplemental documentation that really goes beyond the scope of this particular video. Um, regardless, you're going to fill the entire thing out. Once you've done, got done filling that out, you're going to go to the inside page. You're going to sign and date the top. Um, once this has been completed in its entirety, it will be reviewed by the person behind the counter at the gun store. Once that person is satisfied that it is all correct and everything else, they will then begin to input this information into a computer system. It's called a DROZ or a dealer record of sale. This information is the state law portion of the gun transaction. All this information is then going to be transmitted to the state of California. Immediately upon hitting submit, the gun, technically speaking, becomes part of your property. However, you do not have a possessory interest in this property for 10 days. Many of you are aware of the 10-day waiting period. If you're not, under state law in California, a gun cannot be delivered to a purchaser for, for 10 days to the minute from the time that the gun was purchased. So once this has been satisfied, you're going to more likely than not pay at the counter depending upon the procedures of that particular gun store. And then you'll be given a receipt told to go home and come back 10 days from now. Now, this is very important. There is a window that you can pick up that firearm. It's 10 days from the time that you filled out the paperwork to up to 30 days later. After that, excuse me, 10 days from uh, 30 days from the time of the droves. So you basically have about a 20 day window to pick up the gun. If you fail to pick up the gun during that 20 day period, you have to start all over again. They can't deliver it to you. So it's incumbent upon you to make sure you get back to that gun store to receive your firearm 10 days after you've gone through this droves process. Once this has all been completed, you've waited your 10 days, you've gone back to the gun store, you then will be able to retrieve it. And to retrieve it, they go through an actual process. You'll have to sign the 4473 form again in a separate location. You will also have to sign and thumb stamp a dealer record of sale that's basically printed off on their computer. Here, you'll simply sign your name. You'll thumb stamp right next to it. At that point, the firearm is now 100% yours. You have both an equitable interest in the gun as well as a possessory interest in the firearm. You can then take your firearm in its box, go out to your vehicle, and drive home. Um, the key thing to remember with this entire process is that it's run by people as well as computers. During that 10-day period of time, while the gun is sitting, what we call euphemistically in prison, waiting for the, uh, the, the time to expire, the state is undergoing a background check on you. Now, the way that they do that is to check their own state databases to make sure that you're not a prohibited person. We'll be talking about prohibited people in subsequent videos as well. Assuming you're not a prohibited person on the state level, they then run what's called a NICS check on you. This goes through the FBI. This is that other federal uh, entanglement that's taking place. The feds do a background check on you to make sure that you're not a prohibited person in any other state. Once it's been determined that you are 100% pristine and are able to be in possession of a firearm, the Department of Justice will then allow for the firearm to be delivered. Now, the, the state is not obligated to go within that 10-day period of time. 
If they feel that they need to do more research on you, they can issue what's called a delay. And in a delay, they uh, basically are telling the gun store owner, we're not saying that the transaction is bad. We're not saying that the person isn't entitled to a firearm. What we are saying is we need more time to decide whether or not this person is entitled to be able to take possession of a firearm. They, typically speaking, have 30 days in order to make that determination. Okay. They don't, however, have to notify the gun store. After the 30-day period of time has elapsed, they then can leave it up to the gun store as to whether that, that or not they want to make a, a delivery or not. And as a practical matter, gun stores won't do it because they don't want to be held liable or anything like that. A delay could theoretically materialize into a denial. And honestly, there's nothing in your background that would prohibit you from having a firearm, but it could still potentially happen. It doesn't happen very frequently, but it does happen from time to time. One of the things, probably the biggest thing that, ca that causes issues with law-abiding citizens is that under California law, you're only allowed to purchase one firearm, or excuse me, one handgun every 30 days, okay? A lot of times people get their dates screwed up. They buy one gun and then say 25 days later, they go to buy another gun. That second gun is going to be denied because it falls within that statutorily prohibited time frame. So there's a lot of moving parts here, okay? Um, the good news is that the people that work behind the counter are very, very good at helping you navigate the process, okay? The key thing to remember is that when you show up to the gun store, you absolutely unequivocally want to have all of your personal paperwork in order, the driver's license, the FSC card, utility bill, car registration, stuff like that that shows that you can move forward with this process, okay? Um, and like I said, they'll walk you through everything. If you have any questions at all, you can always talk to them. Um, they're all very, very competent firearms professionals. And yes, it is a complicated process. The state has created a tremendous amount of hurdles for a law-abiding citizen to be able to exercise this fundamental right. Um, it's problematic on a civil rights level, but that notwithstanding, that's the rubric in which we operate right now. Um, so there you go. If you have any questions at all, you can always contact us at the Artemis Defense Institute, or you can email me at stephen at artemishq.com. Thank you. I want you to be training constantly, consistently, repetitively, and with purpose. Above all else, stay safe.